What's your name again? Because I'm pretty sure right now it's Smart Mouth. The trip above the clouds was one of the most breathtaking things I've ever experienced during my time in the wasteland up to this point in my life. True, I'd seen the sun and memory orbs and had a couple of glimpses of it when I was young and lived in the Crystal Empire. However, in my old home, the Equus-bound ponies weren't allowed more than that. This was the first time I'd gotten more than just a taste of the sun. Even hours later, when we were growing closer to our destination, I kept looking out the window and marveling at the beauty of the sun left upon the clouds below. Even better was the beautiful warmth it gave off. I was used to heat living uh, the past few weeks in New Pegasus, but it was just that. Heat. What I felt now was a pleasant warmth from the heavenly body. It brought joy and peace for the small time we had flying towards Stratus. Unfortunately, I didn't get to enjoy the whole trip just watching the sun and clouds. We had planned to do. Solstice, Stardust, and I all went to every part of what we'd be doing when we got to Stratus. We went over everything we could think of that could go wrong and how to either avoid those things from happening or how to escape them if they did. The most important thing right now was getting into the city and making it to Solstice home. Luckily for us, our parents' house was located about a kilometer from one of the smaller skyports. Even better, that port was on the northwest side of Stratus. It was mostly used for rich ponies, like Solstice's parents, or private transports to dock on. Apparently, Stratus and Nimbus were one of the few cities in the Enclave that had free travel between them, so both cities had multiple docks over on their borders. With our fake IDs and the fake log uh, updates Fairy Glitter had added to the roster of the dock we were going to, we should be able to at least get into the city. Several hours after we left Los Alicorn, I finally got my first glimpse of my father's city. Solstice started to slow us down, banking slightly north as she said, Okay, you two be ready for anything. If you both look out the window, you should see Stratus now. Soon we might have to have our stories ready for Enclave Patrols. I'm sure there's a lot of them right now, the sudden takeover by Winterfrost. Neither Stardust nor I answered Solstice. The two of us had our eyes glued at one of the biggest Enclave cities ever to be built. It was hard to believe what my eyes were seeing. How in the goddess's name did the Pegasi build anything this massive on clouds? In the distance, I saw tall buildings jutting up out of the clouds, reaching higher than anything should be able to on such a fluffy surface. I'd call the tall buildings skyscrapers if they weren't already in the sky, as it was. Truthfully, they weren't quite as tall as the buildings in Las Alicorn or Winnapolis. The tallest one of which sat directly in the center of the massive city was probably only 15 or 20 stories tall. Most of the buildings around that one were a few stories shorter. But, in a good five kilometer or so ring at the city center, sat at least fifty tall buildings. We were coming in from the west, and just past the tall buildings, which I had learned from Solstice later, was called the city center. There were large homes, and each looking like it cost millions of bits, as Solstice called the Enclave's currency. They all were on a set of clouds lifted higher than the rest giving the residents of the homes beautiful views over the city. Some homes had little waterfalls flowing down them. Others had huge yards and small landing pads on them. The one thing they all had in common was that each one had a large fence with a gate around each property. On the south side of the city, the homes got smaller and dirtier from what I could make out of them. Going around to the east, where I could barely make them out, I saw workshops and factories three of which were pouring out clouds that teams of Pegasi were moving away from the city towards the warehouses. To the north, just past the rich homes, I saw a huge military base that rivaled the size of Spitfire's Flight Academy. On the largest runway, I saw a monster of an airship. Solstice, what is that thing? I asked. She looked towards the overly huge airship. The thing was so big, the palisade could have probably fit inside of it. 
She took a long moment before she said, That's a Thunderhead. They're the biggest and most powerful Enclave airships. And before you ask, the smaller, yet also still dangerous looking ones around it are Raptors. You might remember those from when Captain Strife came after us. How many of those ships do the Enclave have? Stardust asked, sounding just as amazed as I was. Not many. I'm surprised Navarro let that one out of their sight. That's none other than the New Moon. It's one of the oldest and most well-equipped for war airships they have. She said as she started to turn us towards where a few other transports were heading. The New Moon? That's an odd name for a ship, I said. Not when it used to belong to General Nightstalker, before he was an Enclave leader. Before you ask me about the thing, please don't. I don't know much more than that. My mom can tell you more. She said as we flew in behind a smaller transport, flying into a small landing bay. I looked back to where the Thunderhead was and felt a strange connection to the large airship. Strange. It still didn't matter much. Right now, I needed to get myself ready for what would come next. That was right, too, because as soon as we landed on an available platform, three Enclave guards in pitch-black power armor approached our transport. The lead stallion went over to Solstice first, asking, What brings you to Stratus? We're just returning from a ground mansion. My employer sent one of her youngest scientist unicorns down to the surface to gather research materials. Solstice said, keeping her helmet on with the visor down. Shadow, I mean sparkle. Make sure you have your cloud walking spell active. Remember, Solstice told us that everything built up here is made from clouds even if it doesn't look like it. Stardust hissed. He was right. So I pulled on my magic and cast the Cloud Walker spell as the stallion continued saying to Solstice. I wasn't told that anyone was sent down to the surface recently. The city's under martial law right now, miss. Cotton Sky, I am a guard working with Skywalk Industries, Solstice said. Ah, Miss Sky. Like I said, we weren't told any ponies were sent down to the surface recently. Do you have anything showing you are from Stratus and have permission to enter the city? He asked. Solstice pulled out her ID and showed it to the guard, who scanned it with something in his power armor. As he did, she said, You can contact Supple Wind if you want. She's my direct supervisor. She'll confirm that we're on a week-long mission and not here before the martial law was implemented. She was able to let me know what's changed while we're gone and said we should return. He looked towards one of the others with him and then said, Check with Supple Wind while I check on what's inside the transport. Yes, sir, another stallion said, taking to the air and flying towards what could only be a small guard shack just off the main platforms. Looking back at Solstice, the first stallion said, We'll verify your story. In the meantime, I'll need to check the identifications of every pony in the transport and any materials you brought back with you. No materials, sadly. We got attacked by some fiends a day or so ago, and lost everything, including two of our unicorns and one pegasus. We barely made it out, Solstice said. The stallion cursed. It sounded sad more than angry. Damn wastelanders. Can't even send a peaceful team down there anymore without them attacking. <laughs> and what for? It's not like we use the same form of currency as they do, and nine times out of ten, we kill all of them. You'd think they'd know not to mess with the Grand Pegasus Enclave. What a waste of perfectly good citizens. I agree, Solstice said, also putting a sad note into her voice. If you want, you can trek the transport. Yes, I'll get right on that, he said, then looked over at the other stallion with him. Did you check the ID number on this transport? The last stallion, with a uh, high, young-sounding voice, that was slightly irritating to listen to, responded, saying, Yes, sir. Checks out. Show it belongs to an intel officer named Fairy Glitter. She has it listed as being loaned to Skywalk Industries at the moment. Well, at least that checks out. Hmm. Fairy Glitter. Isn't that Commander Cascade's wife? The first stallion said, I believe so, the whiny stallion said. I was worried that something was about to happen. 
the way he said it made it seem like either one of Solstice's parents, being the owners of the airship, could blow our cover. My worry was short-lived, as the first guard said. Ah, uh, yes, he was my instructor in boot camp back in the day. He then looked over at Solstice. You ever met the commander before, Miss Skye? Can't say that I have. I'm just a poor mare trying to make a living, she responded. Ah, yes, I should have realized that. Well, let me get this check finished, and you'll be free to head into the city. He said, heading to the back of the transport. As he did, Stardust opened the ramp that led out and slowly stepped onto the platform. Good day, sir. Hope your morning's going well, Stardust said with a friendly smile on his face. He, too, was still wearing his helmet with the visor down as he greeted the guard. I followed. My first step on the tarmac looking surface was scary, until I felt the magic around my body take hold and my hoof landed on the cloud that looked too much like solid ground as if it was exactly what it looked like. I let out a soft breath, and then went to stand by Stardust as the guard looked us both over. Finally, he asked, Can I get your IDs and names, please? I held mine out, saying, Sparkle, my name. I am a researcher for Skywalk Industries, and this is my bodyguard. Name's Ace. Nice to meet you, Stardust said in a cheerful tone. He scanned the ideas, then said, Yes, yes. Nice to meet you, too, as well. And I can't complain about my day. Been slow for the most part with the lockdown and all. Sorry to hear you all lost ponies while you were down there. The dirt ponies. Bunch of savages. Throwing a tone of anger into his voice, Stardust replied, Damn right. We lost good ponies to those savages. Good to be home, though. I think I'll take a good long break before going out on a mission like that again. I don't see why any Pegasus in his right mind would ever go down to that disgusting wasteland. Much safer and cleaner to stay up here. You three are brave for doing such a job, he said. Gotta pay the bill somehow. Work is work, after all. Right? Stardust said. Too true. The guard replied before walking past us and into the transport. He took a few minutes to check it for anything that could be dangerous, then returned. Everything looks good here. Once I hear back from Desert Wind, then you can all be on your way. Although you'll have to leave your transport here. New rules state that no transport craft may be flying over the skies of Stratus at this time. Not until the execution. I felt my heart stop at those words, and I couldn't help myself from asking. What? What execution? A sad story, that. The first pony is a stallion who was part of the Seven Sins of Aquinity at one point. He was found working with an enclave army. enemy. The second one is none other than our former High Council pony, Nightshade. They just finished the trial this morning, and his execution is set for noon in two days. The new council just told the public an hour or so before you got back, he said. What did he do that was so bad that it warned execution? Stardust asked. They wouldn't say. Only that he's a traitor to the Enclave and all Pegasi. It's too bad. He was well loved by the ponies of Stratus, as I'm sure you three know, the guard said. I had to work hard to hold back the mixture of rage and sadness I was feeling. After a moment, I was able to say, Yeah, he was. It's too bad we'll lose such a capable leader. Before he could respond, the Pegasus who'd flown off to the guard shack returned. Sergeant Everwind, I heard back from Supple Wind. She says she's been waiting for them to get back and let them into the city. The first guard nodded, then said, Thank you, Desert Wind. Keep me back to your duty. Yes, Sergeant. Desert Wind said, then flew off. Everwind waited a moment, and then looked back at the three of us, his body seeming to relax as he moved closer to Stolcis and Stardust and I. Now that they're gone, listen coldly, Solstice. Your father is waiting for you at Heaven's Portal. He'll escort the three of you back to your house. Make sure you two get your disguises on before you take off your power armor. You have an hour to get to Heaven's Portal before your father comes looking for you. He said he'll put a hoof in all your asses if he has to get that done. Sardis' eyes and mine went wide as he started to call Solstice by her name. That was until I saw Solstice's face relax and then smile. After he finished, she said quietly, 
Thank you, Everwind. I'm glad you were on duty today and not your brother. I don't know what we would have done if it was him. You both know me too well. He chuckled. Your mother was sure I was on duty today just for that reason. But remember, others in town will know it's you even with the power armor. So be quick. You can get whatever you're using to hide who you are on in the restrooms, just off the platforms. Now get going, before the others start to wonder why I'm taking so long talking to three citizens. Solstice moved closer and kissed his cheek, saying, Thank you again, and tell your wife I said hello. Same to your filly. I miss false sitting here. He chuckled. She misses you too. Now go. And with that, he took off to start checking in with another transport ship coming in to land. Solstice led us off the platform and towards a small building. As she walked, I asked, You know that buck? Yes, now be quiet. Don't say anything else till we get inside, she said, then looked at Stardust. You got what you need, right? Sure do, he said. Then he turned and headed into the stallion side of the small building, which I now saw was a public restroom. I followed Solstice until I saw the bathrooms were single occupant only. I guess I'll wait out here? Don't worry about it. I might need your help with this anyway. Just don't let any pony see you follow me in she said, pushing the door open. Shrugging, I went in too, and Solstice shut the door behind us, then locked it. I was expecting the bathroom to be nasty, seeing how it was a public bathroom, but I was surprised at by how clean it was. Say what you will about the Enclave, but they were a clean race of ponies. Solstice opened her power armor after pulling off the helmet, then stepped out of it with a sigh. I took the helmet from her as she stepped out, asking, so, what do you need help with? Ah, damn it. I hate being in my armor for that long, she said, shaking her head back and forth to get her mane to fluff out a little after being stuck under her helmet for so long. As for the help, I just need you to help me do up my mane in a different style. I'm assuming you know how to work on manes. I hope so, because I have no clue how. I've always been more into keeping it short and out of the way for work. Yeah, I know how to do that. Milkshake and I used to do each other's manes all the time as foals, I said. Do you have a brush? She looked sheepish as she looked away. No, never really thought about getting one. I looked at her pink mane and chuckled to myself a little. I remember when I first met Solstice. Her mane had been shorter, almost like mine is now. I guess it made it easier to have a mane like that when you were in the military. But... In the past few weeks since she's been kicked out of her home and been on the run with first my dad, then me, she hadn't had time to cut it again. It was longer now, and looking past the sweat and grime from it being tucked away for hours in a helmet, I could she had a slight wave to it now as it was growing out. Her tail was the same. It was longer now and also had a wave to it. I'd never really taken time to look at Solstice. I mean, yeah, I'd admit I'd checked out her ass once or twenty times, but that was different. When she looked up at me as I pulled out one of my brushes, and her dark blue eyes met mine, I could see now that she was a very pretty mare. The pink of her mane and the blue of her eyes mixed with a light gray in her coat that all went well together. Smiling more, I started to brush out her mane. As I did, I said, You know, you really are a beautiful mare when you let your mane grow like that. She rolled her eyes. You're not hitting on me, are you? I mean, I'm flattered and all, but come on, I don't. Shut up, I said. That's not what I meant, and you know it. It's just that you always seem ready to jump into a fight all the time. I've never seen you just let yourself go and be a mare before. Honestly, I'm surprised you don't have stallions hitting on you all the time. She let out a long sigh and said, I was raised to be a fighter. That's really all there is to know. I've never let myself just be, as you said, a mare before. I don't really think about relationships or anything like that because I'm always worried about the next fight or battle. Honestly, I'm a little scared of letting myself fall for some pony. I wouldn't know the first thing about what to do. I kept brushing out her mane as I said. You think I do? Hell, I was too scared to admit I liked Aura until I was almost too late. I spent three years in my stable with feelings for Milkshake and couldn't tell her because I was scared. 
that's just the way life is sometimes. You can't let fear control you like that. If you like some pony, just tell them. Or if not, then at least try and let you yourself be yourself. Don't always hide behind your warrior mask and just let Solstice out for a while. She chuckled like that. Well, I haven't really found a stallion I've liked in a while. What about that stallion I taped you to back in Halo 1? I asked. She growled a little at the memory of that night. It was the last time I'd seen her before she was banished from Stratus and started helping my dad. After a moment passed, she said, First of all, that was a dick move. You have no idea what it was like for me when I was found with an underling in that position. Second, I didn't like him at all. I just wanted to get laid. He was weak, pathetic buck that would do what I told him to do and wouldn't tell any pony. That's it. I chuckled, then put my brush down and started to pull out my old mane ties and started to do a complex braid to her mane. It wasn't nice, I know, but you also would have killed me if I didn't do it. We weren't friends yet back then, and in all honesty, it was hilarious. Maybe it was to you, she said with a huff. Then she started laughing. Though I guess if it was me who was doing that to another pony who hated me, I'd have done the same thing. I finished up with her mane, then smiled at my work. Well, I'm done with your mane. Now, what are you going to do to hide who you are? She took a moment and looked at herself in the mirror. I could tell she was about to say something condescending about my work, mostly because I know Solstice well enough to, by now, to understand that she loves to rip on ponies for the fun of it. That was until she caught a full view of herself in the mirror. Her eyes went wide as she took in the simple main style I'd given her. I won't go into full detail about what I did, but it was a style I'd seen in old books of a mare who modeled before the war in France. Before I had started Solstice's mane, went down to just past her shoulders and was a mess. Now it was a simple yet elegant design at the same time. It made her look her own age for once and captured her natural beauty. For a split second I saw a tear form in her eyes, then she blinked him away and took a few deep breaths. Thank you, Shadow. I can't believe how good this looks. Then she smiled, looking back over me at her shoulder. Then her eyes went up to my mane. Even with the color change due to my disguise, it was still on the shorter side. More or less looked like a rat's nest. If yours look this good with manes, why does yours look so crappy? I rolled my eyes. Hey, I'm good at fixing other ponies' manes, but when it comes to my own, I was never really good with it. That's another reason I kept mine in the braid all the time. As I spoke, I used the brush to at least get my mane under some control, so the ponies in Stratus wouldn't think I was some nut job. As I did that, Solstice said, that's weird, but oh well. Anyway, this is what I'm using to fix what I look like. It won't last as long as what Stormy did to you and Vervain, but it can be reused. As she said this, she pulled out a large ruby that had a deep glow inside of it. She brought it up to her mane, and in a flash, her mane changed from pink to a reddish-brown. She then touched it to her chest, and with it, her coat changed to a light greenish-blue. Next, she brought it to her eyes, which turned silver. Last was her cutie mark, which became a few falling leaves. The same color as her mane. Damn, that's cool. Did Stormy come up with that? I asked. She said it's a spell she invented a few years back. She put it into a gem, and the spell can be set to change different parts of my body to look different, at least for a few hours at a time, and like I said, it can be reused, she said, putting the gem back into her bag. That's very useful, I said as I put my brush away, now that my mane was more or less tamed. It can be, she said, but also she said that the spell can be broken if I overwork my body. So if we're getting into a fight or anything that overtaxes my body, the spell will fail, Solstice said. Well, now that you're done, should we go check on Stardust? I asked. Yeah. Hopefully he didn't mess up with his gem. When Stormy tried to teach him how to use it, he kept on doing it wrong. It has to be done in order. Mane, coat, eyes, then cutie mark. 
she said as she headed towards the door. Right before she opened it, somebody knocked on it hard, and a mayor's voice called out with authority, saying, This is the Stratus Guard. Only one pony is allowed at a time in the bathrooms. Come out now. Shit, Solstice said, and then looked at me. Follow my lead. I nodded, and Solstice opened the door and gave the other mare a sheepish grin. I'm sorry, ma'am. My mare friend and I just wanted a private place to be alone. The guard looked at Solstice, then me, and said, I need you two to turn in your saddlebags now. I don't believe for one second that you two were having alone time. I mean, who does that in a bathroom? What do you think we have? I asked. Angel dust. Now turn out your bags, she ordered. I knew that I couldn't do that. If she saw any of the weapons I had on me in the bags, there would be a bigger problem. Thankfully, Solstice knew more than I did about how things worked in Stratus. What reason do you have to force us to turn out our bags? I'm a Stratus MP. I have the authority to have any pony who I think is suspicious turn out their bags or pockets. She said, under Section 8, Article 2 of the Civil Protections Law, you need a probable cause to ask any pony to do what you're asking. You also need some kind of proof of wrongdoing before you can do all that. What reason have she or myself been given for you thinking that we've done something wrong, apart from being in the bathroom at the same time? Solstice said, Two mares in the bathroom at the same time is reason enough. If you two were really together, you wouldn't need to hide away like that. I believe one of you is a dealer of angel dust. Maybe something else. The other's a buyer. I have enough reason to have you turn out your bags. She argued. Solstice's eyes went wide. And she said in a pouty voice, You don't believe this is my mare friend? Why wouldn't you believe me? We've been together for a year. That's like super long. She's like my true love and this isn't fair. She said with a offended tone. If we weren't in such a serious situation at the moment, I probably would have laughed at the way Solstice was acting. The guard backed up and then shuddered. I, I don't see any reason to believe you. A moment later, another MP flew over. This one was a stallion and looked a few years older than the mare. He looked at the mare, asking, Shale Mist, what's going on here? I caught these two in the public restrooms, Captain. I think they're holding... They tried to give me some story about them wanting alone time, but I know that's bullshit. She practically spat the last part at us. The captain looked at us, asking, Is Private Mist correct? I wanted so badly to roll my eyes or just shoot the annoying mare, but instead I said, About what? Cotton and I have the day off, and we didn't want ponies watching us while we, you know, made out, so we went into the bathroom. I don't see what the big deal is. Yeah, what Sparkle said. Also, I have my family who work around here, and they don't need to know about Sparkle yet. Solstice said. If you two had been together for a year, like you said, why wouldn't you tell your family? Shale Mist asked. Bite me, it's none of your business. I spat at her. She growled, but the captain put a hoof up. Okay. Fine. First of all, you two don't look like you're the type to use angel dust or any other kind of controlled substance, but my private has a good time. It's a little weird for the two of you to be in the bathroom at the same time. Unless you're doing something wrong or something else I really don't need to know about, give me a good reason to not have you brought in. Right now, all I see is two young mares telling me a story that's not easy to swallow. It's not that often that unicorns and pegasi mix. Before I could say anything, Solstice said, You don't believe me? Really? Just because you're too much of a Pegasus first asshole doesn't mean we all are. But if you want to ignore the love I have for this unicorn, then fine. I'll show you. A second later, Solstice took my face and pulled it to hers. My eyes went wide as she pressed her lips to mine and kissed me deeply as I normally kissed Aura. The shock lasted for maybe two milliseconds. Then, thank the goddesses, my body took over and I kissed her back. First thing that I have to note about this experience, Solstice isn't a bad kisser. 
Second was that there wasn't even a bit of feeling there. Yeah, she was pretty and all, but before Aura, this would have been a big turn-on for me. Now, though, all I could think about was using this as a way to get us out of trouble. However, I still really enjoyed the kiss. It lasted for longer than was necessary. The hoof holster slid to my ass, and left there was going a bit far. If the two guards weren't watching us, I probably would have hit her. Finally, we broke apart for a second, then she gave me a peck on the lips again, then finished with her little show. With a slight dazed look on her face and a slight blush, she said, Happy now? She's faking! Shalemist said. The captain on the other hoof just shook his head, saying, Get out of here, Private Mist. These two are just trying to find a place to be alone. But sir, now do I make myself clear? He yelled, making her cower. Then shot us both a look of utter hatred, then flew away in a, as I said, in a mocking tone. Hater! Thank you, sir. I'm sorry if we caused you any trouble, Solstice said. The captain looked at us both, then said, Don't be sorry, just don't do it again. As you know, things are changing in Stratus right now, and it would be a bad idea if you let yourselves get on the wrong side of the law. I suggest the two of you find your way home and to your jobs, whichever you need to be at right now. Also, count yourself lucky I was in the area. You might not get so lucky next time. I nodded. We'll head home, sir. He nodded back, then took off, flying towards a few more MPs who were flying overhead. When he was gone, Solstice glared at me, saying quietly, If you tell any pony I kissed you, I'll break your horn off. I wanted to make a joke about how serious she'd gotten all of a sudden, then remember that Solstice could probably do what she was threatening. So instead I said, Don't worry, I won't. Then couldn't help adding. Plus, if Aura found out, she'd probably rip your wings off, then break your nose, then probably cut your tongue out and shove it up your ass. Solstice smiled, then started to laugh. If she was a griffin, maybe. But right now, she's nowhere near as good as a fighter as I am. I'm sure I'd be fine. We could test that theory, I teased. One of her eyes twitched, and I saw a bit of worry come to her face. Nah, I don't think I really want to go there. Anyway, we're stardust. I let her change the subject and look towards the stallion side of the public restrooms. Probably trying to figure out how to use the stuff Storm he gave him. She just sighed. Let me get my power armor back on, then we'll go check on him. Check on who? Me? Stardust said from above. We both jumped up to look at him, hovering over the roof of the restrooms. He gave us both a cocky grin, saying, How do I look? His coat was still gray. His mane and eyes, however, were electric green, and the color at the end of his wings, which were normally the same color as his mane, now matched his coat. He hadn't put his power armor back on yet, and his cutie mark was visible. But that was also different. Now he showed two Pegasus wings with a green gem in the middle of them. All in all, he didn't look half bad. At the same time, he also made me think of some kind of punk rock band member, so I decided to tell him as much. You look like a teenager trying to rebel against his parents. I imagine you cry yourself to sleep with the deafening screams coming from your headphones and wearing nothing but black clothes and chains. I thought the insult would wipe the smart grin off his face, but I was wrong. His goofy smile was ten times wider as he said, Awesome! Now, let's do this. Let's rock! He finished his statement by pumping his hoof into the air. Don't ever do that again. You look like a creepy scene kid trying to overstate whatever situation you're in. Solstice said, going back to the restroom and getting back into her power armor. Ah, uh, I thought it was cool. What's wrong with scene kids? Stardust pouted. Whatever you say, Ace. I said, chuckling to myself as he landed and went to get his own power armor. I never get to do anything fun. You also didn't answer my question, he complained. Shaking my head, I just checked the time and waited for my friends. It didn't take long for both of them to be ready to go, and soon we were off, heading towards Heaven's Portal. 
According to Solstice, it was a short trip from where we were. As we walked towards the city, a slightly towards the higher end of Stratus, I got to see more and more Pegasi. Apart from Dragon Bridge and a few exceptions in Freedom, and maybe growing up in the Crystal Empire, I've never been around so many Pegasi in my life. Ever growing up in the Enclave territory, I'd never been uh, up in the clouds before. In my hometown, unicorns outnumbered Pegasi, mostly because the Enclave Pegasi didn't want to be on the surface. Even back when I was a filly, I only knew ponies from Nimbus, and those Pegasi were a little different from the rest of the Enclave. They got along better with unicorns and service dwellers like my family had been. To me, Stratus had always sounded like a military base with a city attached. A place where ponies trained to fight and protect. A place where powerful Pegasi plotted against the enemies of the Enclave and more. Now that I was finally here, I saw how wrong I was. If I didn't know any better, the land below me had just been hit by a magical radiation 200 years ago. I wouldn't have known how hard life was down there. Mostly because Stratus was the closest thing to a pre-war city I'd ever seen. Ponies were dressed in new clothes, they were clean, a lot of them were shopping at stores, or we passed by or going to a bar. Some Pegasi flew by with small carriages, bringing Pegasi around like it was a taxi. There was a park across an intact street, a street that if I hadn't known any better looked like it was really pavement. A freaking park with fools playing in the playground and parrots watching them as they enjoyed the sunshine as it came down on their happy faces. While ponies struggled to survive the wasteland below the clouds, the ponies up here acted like nothing was wrong. They lived life like it was still pre-war Equestria. It made me sick to even think about all the horrors I'd seen while these Pegasi and unicorns lived comfortable lives. For a moment, I just stood in one spot looking over at the fools playing in the park. One flew over to a young mare that looked to be the filly's mother and hugged her tight, laughing with pure joy. The young mare held her daughter tight to her, showing her little filly how much she loved her. As I saw this, I felt the anger melt away. It wasn't the fault of these ponies that they lived so well. It was the fault of the government itself who kept these ponies in the dark about what was really going on in the wasteland. You okay, Sparkle? I heard Stardust say as he put a hoof on my shoulder. Yeah, just got lost in thought is all, I said. Turning to look at him and Solstice, who were waiting for me to continue on, I gave them both a sad smile. Let's get going. Solstice started walking again, and I followed Stardust up to the rear. As we walked, I saw some of the other Pegasi giving my two friends strange looks now and then, but no pony said anything, so I did my best to ignore them. After five minutes passed and less ponies were around, Solstice finally said, if you're wondering why some of the ponies are looking at us strangely, it's because you don't see Power Armor Pegasi walking like this. When they do, it's normally because they're guarding a high-ranked unicorn and you don't look the part. Just keep ignoring them, we're almost there. I didn't respond to her because a crowd of stallions and mares came piling out of a bar just as the uh, laughing stumbled out. One of the stallions, who was wearing a uniform of some kind, drunkenly yelled back at the door, Oh, yeah? Well, bleh. well, we don't want your drink, your stupid something anyway. And then he swayed a bit and started to walk off with his friends, almost bumping into Solstice. An older stallion stepped out of the bar just then. He had a dark red coat with a silvery gray mane. Apart from the top of his head, which was bald, his eyes were a color of the setting sun and his cutie mark was a six falling missiles. He spat a wad to the ground, which sank into the clouds itself to fall down to Equus, then yelled, Oh, that is so. You're lucky I'm waiting for company, or I'd kick your ass from here to Nimbus for drinking in your uniform. You're a disgrace to the Enclave. The stallion in the uniform stopped and spun around, then almost fell over as he lost his balance. Listen here, old Zymer. I'm a corporal in the true Enclave Army. I work for Winterfrost and Navarro. You'd better show me some proper... As the stallion talked, he walked back over to the older buck, lifted his hoof like he was going to strike him. 
I was about to try and help when Solstice stopped me by lifting a wing to block me. Looking up at her, I saw a grin on her face as she said, Just watch. The older buck twisted his head out of the way, ducking under the other stallion's blow, brought one hoof down on the strike the younger one in the gut. Then he twisted again and flipped the younger one around him to slam him down on the back. However, he wasn't done. He then flipped his body around, wrapped his rear legs around the younger buck's neck, still holding the hoof he used to flip the younger stallion over, and stretched it hard. The younger stallion started to gag as his neck was nearly crushed under the pressure of the old buck had placed there. Then there was a sickening sound, like a hoof being pulled out of the mud before a small pop, and the stallion tried to scream in pain. With that, the older buck let the younger one go and got to his hooves as the younger one started to roll around, screaming in pain. His one foreleg not moving at all. Let that be a lesson to you. Don't mess with bucks you don't know, especially when said buck used to be a commander in the Stratus military. The old buck said. Then he looked over at the young buck's friend, saying, Get your friend out of here before I decide to do the same thing to you. My foreleg! What the hell did you do to my foreleg? The young buck screamed. Dislocated it. Go see your sergeant and I'm sure he'll help you set it correctly. Now quit whining like a little filly and get the hell out of my sight before I stick my hoof so far up your ass you taste clear, dirty cloud. The buck yelled. The others helped their friend up and quickly got away from the angry old buck. Once they were gone, the old buck spit again, saying, Dumbass. Once they were all done, the old buck looked over at us. His eyes narrowed a little. That was until Solstice say, Hey, Pops, I see you're having a fun day. The grumpy old buck's face went from slightly annoyed and angry to happy in a split second. About time you got here. Had me worried sick. Now the three of you hurry up and get inside before any pony notices. The last part was a little strange. Now at least 20... Pegasi were looking towards the bar due to all the commotion. Still, I just headed towards the door, following Solstice. Once again, Stardust took up the rear. As I walked in, I saw the door that said Heaven's Portal. A second after I walked into the building, what Solstice said hit me. That old buck was her dad? Shit, now I can see where she got her attack first, ask questions later attitude from. As soon as the door was shut, the old buck looked back at the three of us saying, First of all, you two, he pointed at Stardust and I, if you haven't figured it out by Solstice calling me Pops, I'm her father. Name's Cascade, former military in the Stratus military. I'm not a nice buck, so don't start whining about how unfair shit is with this foolhardy mission you've come up here to complete. Second of all, he looked at Solstice, why the hell did you risk your life coming up here just to save the life of one buck? You know I love you, but you can be such a dumbass. Two bucks, I said, not letting his gruff attitude get to me. One's your true high council pony. The other risked his life to help me, so let me say this. I was unfortunately cut off by Cascade. Yeah, yeah, Nightshade got himself caught finally. Told him he would one day, the idiot. I'm guessing you're as full. I take it the apple doesn't fall far far, does it? Listen to me, Philly. You're planning on breaking into one of the most high-level security buildings in Stratus. Breaking out not just Nightshade, but a former sin. I get that you want, you love your dad, and all that mushy heavy crap. But I ain't gonna let you risk my daughter's life doing it. If you want to save him, then do it yourself. Cascade said, his frown deepening. Dad, you can't tell me, Solstice said, but was cut off by Cascade. Don't backtalk me, Sol. You're my daughter, and you'll do as I say. Your mother can't go through losing her foal again, and neither can I. I know your head's strong, and don't like much to listen to us. But this one time, don't be a dumbass and do as you're told. Get out of Stratus and go back into hiding. And when Frost knows you're here, you know what he'll do to you. His voice shook a little, and I could tell he was holding back a massive amount of his emotions. Listen here, Cascade. 
Stardust said, pulling his helmet off and glaring at the old buck. Fairy Glitter promised us safe passage here, and her help is saving our friends. Also, Solstice is a grown mare, and I don't care who you are, you can't tell her what to do. He glared over at Stardust. Then something came over Cascade as he took a closer look at my friend. What's your name again? Because I'm pretty sure right now it's Smartmouth. Taken aback, he answered. Stardust? Why? His eyes widened a little. Then in a voice I could barely hear, Cascade said, It can't be. Then in a louder voice, he said, I don't appreciate being talked back to by a child. As for you, I think you should stay out of this. From what I know, this is her problem, not either of yours. He finished by pointing a hoof at me. It wasn't very often that I saw the soldier side of my friend come out. Normally, Stardust was a fun-loving kind of pony. Loved to joke around and tease me or others when he could. Although when he needed to, he was scary. Right now is one of those times. His face grew serious. He took a few steps forward until he was close to his cascade. He was still a few centimeters taller than the old buck. Then he growled down at the older buck. Don't call me a child. Don't call any of us children. You have no idea what Shadow, Solstice, or I have gone through over the past few weeks. You have no right to tell us what to do. Now I suggest you start helping us figure out a plan on how we're going to save Thundercracker and Nightshade. Or I'm going to show you why I was the top-ranked member of my old stable. Cascade didn't back down. The tough old buck stood there a little taller than Stardust and growled back. Don't make me kick your ass, Colt. You might think you're tough, but you ain't got nothing on me. Take that thorny rosebush out of your ass right now, or I will. Solstice and I were both frozen in place. Not sure what to do to stop this clash of testosterone. Then the door to the back room opened, and a mare around Solstice's height walked out. She had a light gray coat with bright emerald eyes, a matching mane and tail that were just like Solstice, and oddly enough Stardust. She also had emerald wing, emerald greed wingtips. On her flanks, there was a set of translucent wings with sparkly stuff coming off of them for a cutie mark. Her eyes were so friendly it almost made me want to hug her for some reason. When she spoke, her voice made it seem like she didn't have a care in the world. What's all the commotion out here, Cascade? <gasps> oh, Solstice, you're back! The mare flew over to Solstice and pulled her into a tight hug. Solstice almost fell over, but managed to keep her balance as she said, Hi, Mom. As for all the noise, that's just Dad being himself. You know, trying to pick fights with every pony in the room. The mare, who I guess was Fairy Glitter, looked over at Cascade, saying, Cascade, why are you bothering our guests? He's trying to tell me that saving my dad is hopeless, I said angrily. Fairy Glitter let her daughter go as she stomped over to Cascade, who now looked a little scared. Cascade, we've been over this. We're helping them save Nightshade and that sin greed. Even if Star wasn't here to save her dad, you should be helping him get out of that place anyway. He was one of your best friends when you were in the military. I know, sweetheart, but Solstice and this moron over here are going to get themselves killed trying to help this Billy get her dad back. I can't allow it, he said. Oh, I see how it is now, Stardust said, his voice still laced with anger. You don't care if our unicorn friend gets killed, just us Pegasi. I thought Solstice's parents wouldn't be like that, but... I guess I was wrong. I saw a strange look come over Fairy Glitter's face when Stardust talked, but she hid it a moment later as she put a hoof up to touch Stardust's face before saying, We are going to help, and no, we aren't like that, Stardust. My husband has his reasons for acting that way, and I can explain more later once you three get back to the house. Then she looked over at Cascade. I don't want to hear another word about not helping them, Cascade. We're doing our part, and that's final. Cascade's face fell as he said, Fine. I'm making it known right now that I'm not in favor of this plan. 
Solstice looked between her parents nervously. So, why did you want us to meet you at the bar and not home? Fairy Glitter looked over at Solstice, and then said, It's because we couldn't risk three strangers showing up at our door. Winter Frost has let most of the normal day-to-day -day things go normal for now, but he's keeping an eye on known allies or friends of Nightshade. I've been friends with Nightshade since we were foals, so our place is being watched all the time. How do you plan on getting us in there, then? I asked. Easy. We just take a carriage home. Normally I fly wherever I need to go. But last week I started a rumor that I'd suddenly taken ill, and flying has gotten hard for me. So I've been taking a carriage around Stratus when I need to leave the house, Fairy Glitter said. Is our sky carriage big enough for us all to fit in? Solstice asked. The last time I was in that thing, it was almost too small for the three of us. We aren't taking our carriage. We're taking a sky taxi, Cascade said with a huff. And before you ask, don't worry about the driver. We always get the same one, and he's a friend. What I want to know is, when can I take off this damn power armor? Stardust complained. Ah, it's a little too toasty in there for your candied ass, Cascade said. It's a fine set of armor you have on, and you should be proud to have it. It's genuine enclave power armor that hasn't been plundered and tampered with by wastelanders. Says you. This thing itches and it slows me down, Stardust said. And I guess whoever trained you did a shitty job. Goddesses forbid an advanced piece of technology is too damned itchy for the pansy using it, who has to slow to begin with, Cascade said. It was Doorstop who trained him, I said irritably. You know, your brother-in-law. The look on Cascade's face was priceless. His eyes went big and his jaw dropped open before he looked first at me, then his wife, then Stardust. After a moment, he went back to looking at his wife and then said, You told me your brother died. Don't tell me you knew about this, too. Honey, now's not the time. But yes, I knew he was alive. I'll tell you everything when we're home. It's not safe here. Fairy Glitter said. What a load. I want to know how any more secrets you've been hiding from me. He started to yell. The two of them started to bicker back and forth. As they did, I walked over to Solstice, asking, You did know Doorstop was your uncle, right? She just shrugged. Yeah, I knew as soon as I met him. My mom has a picture of him in her room and told me stories about him. We talked about it when we were in the kingdom after you left. Did he ever explain why he wasn't stable 97? The excuse he gave didn't make any sense. I asked as Fairy Glitter and Cascade's argument grew more heated. Stardust came over, too, as Solstice said. He just told me that my mom wanted him to keep some pony safe, but he never said who. Talking about doorstop? Stardust asked. Yeah, why? Just wondering. I tried talking to him about why he was in Stable 97, working for his sister for so long, but all he said to me was to shut my mouth and get back to work, Stardust said, then looked off into the distance. Which I didn't understand because at the time I wasn't doing anything. I think your mother has more secrets than we thought, Solstice, I said. That's my mom for you. She's always been full of secrets. Solstice said with a sigh. Come on, let's break him up before and get back to the house before somebody calls the guards. Wouldn't be the first time. With that, we proceeded to get them to stop their fighting. After tempers were cooled and promises made to explain more later, Cascade went off to call the taxi friend. It didn't take long before all of us were shoved into a dark sky carriage and we were flying off towards the riches sector in the Stratus.